Vertical evacuation has been talked about since uh, the early 70s, and, and now uh, most of us prefer to refer to that as vertical refuge because it, you really want to try to get people out uh, away from the coastline if possible. Uh, and our role here is, is defined as forecasters at the National Hurricane Center. We need to stick to the meteorology, but I'm sure that vertical refuge will be looked at by some of the emergency managers in the future. There's not only one-to-one -one correlation between the minimum central pressure and the maximum wind. I wish life were that simple. It's just not like that. It, it depends more on the pressure gradient, and, and the truth was that uh, the gradient uh, uh, was different in Katrina. And even though we had, at that first Louisiana landfall, a 920 millibar pressure, uh, you know, typically that's, uh, that's on you know, the borderline of a Category 5 hurricane. But uh, uh, we've got a wealth of information now from the, the Doppler radars, from the uh, NOAA P-3 aircraft that's out there flying the step frequency microwave radiometer, uh, giving us surface data. And at least at this time, we think that it was a Category 4 hurricane at landfall. Tornadoes most often form these outer rain bands that may be well away from the eye, you know, even a, a, a couple hundred miles away from the eye. Uh, now, the question is, uh, can they form in the Iowa itself? And we've had some reports of that. Well, there are a lot of storm chasers out there nowadays, and I... Uh, I think that uh, one of these days we'll probably have a uh, reporter uh, uh, decapitated uh, and it'll make for great uh, live TV, but uh, that's not the right message uh, that I'd like to see sent. Uh, I think the smartest thing to do would be just to put cameras uh, out there on the coastline and let the camera do the work for you rather than uh, put a person's life at risk by having them stay in the coastline. Uh, we try to document our gaps the best we can and we really have uh, you know two big gaps uh, number one is with the observations uh, we need improved observations in the environment around the hurricane and in the core of the hurricane itself uh, NOAA has a plan to work on that and to improve that uh, we also have another gap in the uh, the computer modeling we know that we need to get better uh, computer models more accurate on track and intensity and and uh, a new hurricane model is in development and will be operational most likely in 2007. So we're headed the right direction, but we still have a long way to go. You can't expect miracles in the computer models if you don't have good data to go into the models. And one thing that NOAA is doing, we have a, a Gulfstream 4 jet aircraft that right now flies the environment around the hurricane to sample the steering currents. Uh, we're hoping to be able to do more of that uh, for those steering currents. We're also going to put instruments on board that uh, NOAA jet to um, sample the uh, core of the hurricane uh, more effectively than we've been doing in, in, in three dimensions. Uh, and then that data can get into these high resolution computer models, which will hopefully give us better track and intensity forecast. Well, we did get a congressional uh, a supplemental bill uh, last year after the 2004 hurricane season. Uh, we had seven new buoys placed out there, but they've been very, very helpful uh, this hurricane season. Had a couple of years in the uh, United States Air Force uh, as a forecaster in 1970 to 72. Then I came to the National Hurricane Center in, in September of 1972, and I've been here for 33 years. The greatest satisfaction is uh, feeling like you've done a little bit of good on occasion, and, and that is uh, uh, by saving lives. And the, the uh, uh, greatest disappointment, of course, would be when you do have uh, a large loss of life like we had in Katrina. You've spent years warning and educating people on hurricanes, how to get away from them, what the dangers are, and then all of a sudden a thousand people die. How did that make you feel? Well, the uh, loss of life is, uh, is uh, you know, really regrettable, and you, you don't ever want to see that, and we need to uh, figure out how we can prevent that the next time, and I think that if there's anything good uh, that can come out of Katrina, and that's pretty hard to find, uh, but if there is anything, it's the fact that uh, people's awareness has been increased of hurricanes, and hopefully that will uh, help us motivate people to develop those hurricane plans and know exactly what to do before the next one comes. Uh, the track forecasting has indeed improved. There's, there's no denying that. The trend lines are coming down at all time periods. At 24 hours, the average track forecast there is about 85 miles. And, I mean, that's the average. And what that means is uh, we could be forecasting a hurricane to hit Miami Beach, and it could easily be 85 miles up or down the coastline. Uh, and then the areas get larger the farther out in time you go. But people really need to understand those limitations we have and, and 
factor that into their plans. The forecasters have a lot of challenges, and, and I think one of them is just uh, the sheer volume of data that comes in uh, from the aircraft, from the satellite, from the land-based radars, uh, from the buoys, from the land stations, and, and the conflicting data that uh, we have all the time. Uh, uh, you, you don't have very much time to look at that data and, and put out that forecast, so uh, that's always a challenge for us.